See, we can't bring back the interview in a matter of a minute or so, but definitely an uh, amazing interview with Andrew Lozano. We're definitely enjoying our conversation and all, and I'll definitely be bringing that back to you in a matter of a second or two while we try to get these technical glitches and see if we can't get that pre-recorded interview back in line and everything. Because like I said, it was a truly great interview. He was definitely sharing a lot about his uh, drumming and a number of other things that he's very much in it about so definitely a great interview and definitely was enjoying our conversation and all of that so in the meantime while we wait for that i'm going to bring up a little bit of some of the other shows that, that exist here on the international broadcast media and then hopefully by the time we see a couple of these spots that particular thing will be ready to run again and share more of his wisdom and all that he wanted to share with us so we're going to bring up a couple of the uh Spots that we are part of in terms of other shows that exist here on the international broadcast media. So y'all hold on one second. We're going to bring up a couple of those and then we'll be back with some more great music as well. Because We're always glad to have, I mean, not great music, but great conversation as well. So like I said, and of course, we we'll probably bring some music into the picture also because we do like to share music with what we've got going on as well. So actually, I'm going to see if it's up and running before we get into the ads. Oh, looks like this might be back up and running. So hold on one second. So we're going to see if we can't get that back up and running. We may not have to get to those uh, spots, but we'll run just one just for the sake of running one, a small one. So we'll run a little small one right now and then we'll come back. So let's check that out. So hold on one second. We'll see if we can't get a small one up. Hello, my name is Natural Breeden, and I'm introducing a new author in her publication. Dr. Veronica Hardy is an inspirational speaker, author, and educator. Through her writing and public speaking, she uses the power of story to reveal and confront challenges experienced by the readers and listeners. And this is showcased through her book, A Letter to My Sisters, Reflecting on God's Promises. Dr. Hardy, what influenced the title of your book? I can say, now I did change the title a few times. Um, it went from, I think I started with calling it Tamar's View, um, to capture more from her perspective. Mm -hmm. Then I switched it to everybody has their stuff. You know, we all mm -hmm. carry yes. something. Yes. And then finally I decided to pray. You know, God, what, what do you really want people to receive or know from this book? Mm -hmm. And so that's when a letter to my sisters reflecting on God's promises really came to me because I felt it was really fitting that I was writing something for other women to read from my heart to theirs. Oh, thank you. Now, Dr. Hardy, why did you choose the story about Tamar as the basis of the book? I feel like oftentimes we don't talk much about the women, women in the Bible who have gone through difficulties mm -hmm. such as her. She was raped or sexually assaulted by her half-brother. Okay. And I just thought that was an important story to be able to bring out. And I thought it was important to kind of bring out her story, how she responded to it, so we could also look at how we respond to it as well. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Hardy, how does the story of Tamar serve as an example for you? Mm, I would say strength, for one. It seems like, it seems like she didn't hide it at mm -hmm. all. And I think sometimes if someone were to ask us, we want to cover it. We don't want to yes. share it. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we're carrying the shame or we feel like we're guilty that we mm -hmm. caused the situation to happen to us. Mm -hmm. So I was glad she was able to share it with her brother, acknowledge it. And then he said to her, don't take it to heart. Mm -hmm. And that message spoke to me that we don't have to carry it, carry what someone else did to us. We don't have to make that become part of our identity but for us to remember who we are, because she was a princess. Okay? And that's not taken away because of what someone else did to her. And I just wanted us as women to remember who we are in God's eyes. Absolutely. Thank you for mm -hmm.
the, in yeah. the musical game, you are used to that and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's you'd be jamming. At, I remember as a kid, you jam at. Uh, at um, I used to wheel my bass over to my my band's house. <laughs> we didn't realize we lived on the same block at one point. <laughs> no yeah. joke. And uh, as I'm wheeling my bass over there, they were making some tacos, and we got to eat some tacos, have some beers, and relax. And then there, you walk into the living room. They had it all set up. The drums. It's like heaven. I used to love jamming over at the Marquez's house, man. I miss oh, my yeah, yeah. I miss my fam, man. I miss them so much. They're doing their own thing now. Yeah. Okay, so they're doing their own thing and they're performing. By the way, Eris is watching us. So even been just late hour. Eris is up late and she was saying hello hey, and all hey, of that. Well, she's up early. It's uh, she's in she's in uh, Hawaii time, so yeah. two hours behind me. So she's five thirty. I'm yeah, seven thirty. Yeah, it's real <laughs> early for her. It's like just the end of the workday. Oh yeah, she's just getting off work, pop in a Hawaiian beer right now, but she don't eat pork, so. Yeah, I always tease her about that. <laughs> Either about that, the fact that she's not going to have any of that pig going on at all. Speaking of that, you mentioned the djembe, and I actually there's a gentleman who unfortunately passed away a few years back named Baba Chuck Davis, but he was the founder of the African American Dance Ensemble, and definitely uh, was very instrumental in a lot of people learning about African music here and everything. So I was just wondering, when did you become a fan of the djembe and a little bit about that music and all, because I definitely know some musicians that are part of that culture here, but I'd love to know when you became a fan of that. And also what are some of the other instruments you mentioned the ukulele, and that's not a common instrument that a lot of folks know about, even though I do know that there's a local here in Durham ukulele band, but I was just wondering if you could talk definitely about those two instruments, because they're not, as common as say some of the other ones are you're right um you know having an african drum um and this is truly from africa uh, it was imported um i picked it up in davis california when i was living in san jose um it's got the here let me grab it real quick you guys see this, this is very interesting oh, oh i got my tambourine here too but um if you think about buying a djembe there's a bunch of them you can get at guitar center or at your local stores but this one here has real uh real skin on it Oh and, yeah, uh, you can see it, and um, in the middle is of, of course the lower and the, the higher end, is the, um, and you have to kind of heat it up and then trick these strings and wind them in to tune it. Um, mm -hmm. So it changes in, in the summer. So I usually get a good tone in the summer because the studio. Um, I really enjoy this. So this right here uh, was a gift from a friend of mine who um, knew I liked going to drum circles. I used to borrow them and we used to go under the freeway in San Jose and get into the drum circles. Um, so she bought me one and I used to sit on it, you know, and play, you know. And um, tap my foot about. Um, I've always been infatuated with the, the culture of gym bass and the techniques and the traditions that they, that all come with it. Um, I was really impressed with uh a lot of musicians that were uh, putting that in in the early days in the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. um, always liked the doors. They didn't have too much of this, but they played a lot of sitars. So that's another yeah. issue I want to get into. Uh, the ukulele, ukulele was um, inspired when I went to Kauai uh, several years ago. We went to a little shop out there. Uh, it's actually where um, I think it was near Princeton or mm -hmm. it was. Um, I can't remember. There's a little shop out there and I got to play one. And I um, and I wanted to order one, but they didn't ship across the states yet because uh, they were a new new mom and pop shop. So I ended up buying one here, and my dad started playing it. And he got really good. He's a guitar player, like I mentioned. He used, did a uh, you know Latin percussion. So my was somewhere around here, but um, I think it's got a very intimate sound. And with that instrument, you can play with other musicians. They have a bass ukulele. Um, it's a little bit more beefier. But it's if I had a better vocals, my vocals are just really bad right now. Because as you get older, your vocals get bad. It's still right. it's muscle you got to exercise. Yeah. Um, but you will hear that in probably um, in future uh, music that I have. I'm gonna bring yeah. that in. It needs to be intimate. It needs to come back down and back to that sandy life. Oh yeah. What are some of the other instruments that you would like to have? You mentioned this guitar. What are some of the other instruments that you would like to have that you don't have as well as some of the sound equipment that is like on your dream list? If somebody's watching that happens to be in say South Africa or Malaysia or some other place and they've got like something off on the side that they want to spare gift you and everything. So what are some of the things that are on your wish list? Well, you know, I've always wanted one since I'm a bass player. I always wanted an upright bass. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I always liked the way it felt uh, when I tried them out. I always wanted an upright bass, um, of course, the sitar, um, and maybe a, um, a drum kit. You know, um, I do da dabble with drums. I mean, I could hold mine. I've done it before in church, but uh, yeah. I don't own my own. So more like more than anything, maybe an electronic drum kit because you can use uh, Logic Pro's ESX24 sampler and, and place the sounds wherever you want. And you can also drum quietly, you mm -hmm. know, and practice if you wanted to. Um, but it's mainly just the upright bass. I would love to have an upright bass, maybe one that has like a, an active pickup that you can plug in. Right. Oh, my God, just to feel that. that the, the smooth uh, animal skin uh, strings they put on there is just amazing. Oh, yeah. that boom, boom, boom. It's so good. Oh, yeah. And when we get back to performing, is there like you mentioned the places you would like to visit, but there's, is there like some ideal venues that you would like to perform at that you haven't had the pleasure of performing at yet or ideal festivals or concerts that are on your dream list of places that you would like to perform? Oh, my gosh. Yes. The Greek Theater in Berkeley, California. It's an uh, outdoor event. Um, it's, they've got like seating all the way around with this little stage. It is remarkable. I love watching bands outdoors. Um, there, I would like to play. Um, gosh, there's some just some places in in, different, in Mexico I'd like to play too. I don't know them off the top of my head, um, but definitely in Berkeley because um, yeah, I like California a lot. The weather's great almost every all year round. And uh, and it's outdoors and the music, the sound is amazing. Anywhere you sit in there, you get you get a different perspective of the speakers. Um, so if you haven't been, if you go to if you go to Berkeley, and there's a band playing, I definitely encourage you to check it out. My first time there, I saw Jill Scott. Oh, oh my wow. god, she she had just started. She was crying because the fans were just so involved. I was front row looking straight up at her. I could see that I could see the tears falling down hitting her shoes wow. uh, very lovely performer very lovely i love jill scott and thank you roots for discovering her <laughs> from philadelphia oh, yeah jill scott is a truly amazing musician and all oh, that yeah. are there any musicians that you would like to perform with that you haven't had the pleasure of performing with i'm sure there are a number of them but what are some of the musicians that you would love to perform with if you had your brothers and were able to make that happen oh gosh i, I got it gotta say man i re i love so many bands I would like to open up for Beck, you know, okay. I love Beck. I think he's funky. I, I would love to have a funky band like that. I would love to play with Tycho, like alongside mm -hmm. with Tycho in a live performance. Um, oh gosh. I, I, oh man. I, I would love to, for Santana to blow. Bless my album. Sometimes you're right. Right. I yes. love, I love Santana. I love everything he's for his musicianship, his guitar playing is he's so spiritual. Um, oh, yeah. Gosh, I, 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 I just can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Um, uh, let's see, maybe for some hip hop. Um, I don't know why I, I, I hate saying this, but I, I think that uh, what's that? Uh, I think Kanye West is pretty cool, too. I, despite oh, yeah. of his person, you know, I understand everyone's got problems, but the guy's a pretty good, he's a pretty genius guy. Uh, his shows are, are, are really magical. Um, not a whole big fan of his music, but I really like his art, his, his art. Um, and uh, as there's a Will Smith's son, Jaden Smith. Yes. Oh my God. His two albums he put out. Oh my, it, it, I thought it was really, really good. And of course I would love to work with uh, Kay Trinata. Um, these are like electronic artists, Flying mm -hmm. Lotus, um, and some of these lo-fi um, um, artists, uh, like this guy named The Deli. Okay. Yeah, The Deli. Some kid, some I don't even know where he's from. He's just his lo-fi beats are just really there. It's so soothing. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like some amazing musicians to definitely shoot for and hopefully get a chance to perform with. I'm surprised you didn't say either uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers or, of course, a icon in the, the Latin American society, which is Sheila E. Because I know I'm a big fan of I Sheila E. I've met her before. Um, Chili Peppers. I I don't even know if I would love to jam with them because I love them so much. Chili Peppers. I I love the Chili Peppers. I wanted to be Flea. You tell my dad when I first got the bass, he's like, what are you doing? Because I was like, Beckett, 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 Beckett. I was trying to learn my triplets, you know, and I wanted to be like Flea. That's, he actually inspired me to want to play bass a lot. I love the Chili Peppers, love Jane's Addiction, loved modern rock music, like The Cure, Depeche Mode, uh, mm -hmm. Front 242, like all those. I loved Morrissey, like, you know what I mean? I really, I, I, I guess I have a, 
a, a pretty big span of, of musical genres that I love so much. And I, and you mentioned what kind of style of music I like. I put all of that in right. my music. Um, I would say a lot of my guitar playing is a little between Tycho and Smashing mm-hmm. Pumpkins, Gish, okay. the first album, because he uses what they call an Ebo. And you're going to hear a lot of this in my new album called High Tide, which is coming out on my birthday, May 21st. Okay. I use it. And what this does is it rattles the strings, makes it go, zzz, and it almost sounds like a backwards guitar if you have delay. Uh, and it will work on a bass. It's, it's hard, but it will. And it does some really cool tones. And I really like Billy Corgan on the album Gish, uh, Window Pain. And there's a bunch of songs on there that really inspired my musical abilities. Um, and I believe that shines through me uh, when you listen to my album. And it's really, you're like, wow, Smashing Pumpkins. I didn't hear any Smashing Pumpkins on Conceptualized. But if you listen carefully, there's some components there that all fit. And, and Jane's Addiction and Chili Peppers. I haven't got to the funky songs yet, but this next one, I might throw some slap bass. Oh, actually, there is some slap bass on that one on Conceptualized. Okay. There's a song called Honey. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did check the song Honey out. Um, Conceptualized, tell folks a little bit about that and how that came about and what the whole concept of conceptualize was of why you came up with that title and what you meant by conceptualize. Um, yeah, conceptualize. Um, it kind of just fell in my lap. I, it, and the reason I chose the name was because the music just kind of came to me. It was the easiest album I've ever written. And I've done a lot of albums for other people. My wife's like, you better do something for yourself. And I'm like, you're right. I got to do something for myself. And so instead of producing all these other people, there was a um, a guy named Roving Jewel, and I talk about him almost on every uh, um, interview I do. Um, he's got an album out called The 30th Expansion. Uh, if you can't see that, probably, I don't know. Anyway, um, I helped produce this album, not produce, mix and master his album and his first one. And it's kind of like a lo-fi hip-hop chill type music. That inspired me to kind of slow things down from like 125 BPM to about uh, 80 to 100 BPM on this album. My album takes you on a journey. And it's, um, I, at first I wanted it to be a concept album because the music kind of feeds itself. It takes you from earth all the way to outer space in a sense. Um, and every song has a movie that I created in my head. So it starts off with children playing. That was the title track conceptualize. And it ends up with the song called universe where it just sweeps you out into the Milky way. Um, really into stars. I really love shooting stars, but conceptualize was me in a hot summer day in the backyard with no shirt on, trying to get my tan on because it was hot and there was fires going on. So you couldn't be out there too long or else you get sick. Right. Um, when I work on my, the first song I worked on was called honey. It wasn't the first song on the album, but I did that in four hours. The next one just came out after an hour, took a lunch break, came back, did another one. And it just kind of built itself. So I was online trying to figure out a name for this album. Like, what am I going to call this one? Honey? No, no. I think Radiohead had a track, uh, uh, an album called Pablo Honey, right? <laughs> I didn't want to use that. I, out of respects, I love Radiohead a lot. Um, so I went online and conceptual concept, uh, Conception came up and then Conceptual Lives came up. And I looked it up and I was like, this is a very interesting, it's like, an, a, imagine a, a complex, um, what was it, um, uh, concept in, involving many elements, um, which takes little brain work um, that is involved. Um, so when you conceptualize, you either create a concept or you grasp one. And the idea, mm-hmm. uh, basically, like the idea that man wanted to land on the moon, it wasn't something that came out in the 60s. They thought about this a long time ago. They conceptualized mm-hmm. it and made it reality nothing's impossible. Right. Right. Uh, and so I felt like this album wasn't impossible. I was going to accomplish it and I'm doing that again now. And I'm finding it, it's very hard to write my second album because I'm writing more lyrics and more music and experimentation. Um, so it's been a a tough road, but that's how conceptualized came along, uh, just with everything going on. And, um, I was taking all the vibes and making it a positive one. And I encourage all of you, you have some time, Drink, get, grab a bottle of wine or your drink of choice and just listen to the whole album. It's, it's fun. I just got a text message from somebody. I just ran a person on, on, on uh, Instagram saying I'm in my patio right now, drinking some wine with friends. Thank you for making this album conceptualize. It is amazing. Um, and that yeah. just been right now. Um, and I thank you, whoever wrote that on Instagram. Thank you. 
Yeah, definitely. That's a great thing that you're getting those kind of messages from Instagram and social media on a regular basis and everything. So the fact yeah. that they're out there finding your music is mm-hmm. uh, truly amazing. You said that there's a uh, second album that'll come out on your birthday. Do you have a title yet for that album? And it will it be similar to Conceptualize or will it go in a whole different uh, direction? Yeah, um, I may have jumped the gun and releasing another album so soon because my last one took 10 months to write from February all the way out to November. I was done. It was released in January. Uh, this one here, I started in January and there's a few leftover songs from my first one. I actually wrote 20, 28 songs, but only used 12. So there's only a few that are coming on to this album. The album title was going to be called, it was going to be an EP. And Aries was promoting it as an EP um, Monday through Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was going to be the names of the songs. So um, I ended up changing the name from weekdays to um, high tide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, There was a, if you look at my album covers, a picture of the side of my face, I don't know which way I'm looking, but my wife took it. I think I got heat stroke that day in the backyard. She's a, my wife's a very good artist and photographer. She designed my art cover. Thank you, babe. This one here, I wanted to view the back of my head. I will never show my face on another album cover. So this one's the back of my head. And I wish I had it to share with you, but it's, uh, we took the shot over at, uh, yeah, um, off the coast, um, off of highway one, uh, it's called shark fin beach. I think it's a really cool cove. Um, and it's just like, you have to go down these rocks It's very steep. And I said, this is it. The sun was going down. So I decided to call it High Tide. It has a lot of meaning behind it. My wife's on one of the songs. I have a couple of hip hop artists from Live Mannequins uh, here in Sacramento. I got the Shaw Brothers on it. My buddy Roving Jewels on one of the tracks. I got, hopefully, a very good folk rock singer named Katie Jane, who's going to help bless the album. She's a a songwriter, um, a musician, keys, um, everything. And then I have another, um, another artist coming out. So it's going to be a nice little rounded, a little bit of soul, a little bit of lo-fi, a little bit of hip hop. Um, and I hope it complements conceptualize. Sounds like it could be a, uh, <laughs> great, uh, companion piece and everything. So, uh, you hoping to release an album like once every, uh, two or three years or once, uh, what is your goal in terms of releasing albums? Cause like you said, this one is actually fairly fast on the heels of the other one, but you wrote 28 songs. So you still got plenty that you can use or even a third or a fourth album. So what are you yeah. kind of like thinking in terms of your future planning? Yeah, it's right now I've been going off a lot of feeling um, because conceptualize just poured out of me and it was so easy to do. Like I mentioned, I can do a song every four hours. I was just writing a new song, mix and mastered by, by the way. Um, this one here is a little bit harder because I'm giving it a little bit more thought. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm not overdoing it. And my wife's like, why are you just putting this out in five months? Do you feel like you're forcing it? Or do you feel like you're not going to get it? You're not going to meet your expectations. Um, I set the goals out because I wanted to change my artist profile. I Everyone knows me for house music. And they know me as the mix and mastering guy. So I put myself on the face of this album just to let them know this is the face that's been doing all this music. And I wanted to do something for myself. But I'll never put my face on it again. It'll just be the back of my head. I um, th- I think this this album is the one that's going to challenge me the most. Um, it's really p- I'm pouring my heart and soul into it, and I'm and I'm hope I'm not dragging my wife driving my wife crazy, uh, with it because I talk about it so 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 much, and she's like I don't you know it's 17 years of marriage and you're still talking about music as like we first met the first day. It's like I'm always trying to uh, uh I don't know try to get that. <laughs> I don't know, try to brag about the music for her because she's like my biggest fan. And um, I, it, I don't know, I, I her opinion me, means a lot to me. So there's been a lot of times where I like, she's like, I don't know about this song. I'm like, yeah, it's scratched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is the hardest one I've ever done in my career of writing music because I'm. it's not that I'm picky. It's just, I, I, I feel like it's not flowing as fast as conceptualize is. Um, and I need inspiration. With all the chaos going on now that Trump's out of office, nothing against people who love Trump, but there, there was a lot of chaos and that brought a lot of emotions. And I feel like you kind of need that uh, to, to create these brainwaves to move. Um, so I'm trying to find other inspirations like my kids, my life, my family, uh, my friends. Um, and, and that's where I'm going with this one here. So High Tide is, is, um, is a wave and I'm hoping to make waves with this album. Definitely sounds like it should make a lot of waves and everything. Who do you think is your biggest critic? Is it your wife? Is it your 
parents, if they're still around and everything, because I know that one of the things I often have to talk about is that I've done a whole lot of interviews, some with like the heiress team and everything, and definitely some with some other folks, probably close to over a hundred, just using IBM TV as an example and everything. But the one folks that I'm always afraid to do an interview with is my own parent because they came out of radio and I know that they would probably be a great interview, but they would also be probably my biggest critics in terms of like what I did right or what I did wrong during the course of the interview. Cause I know even sometimes if I write a Facebook post, my, uh, dad who's a former uh, journalism professor will point out some of the English mistakes that I might have made in the course of just a simple Facebook post. So I just wondering, who do you think is your hardest critic? Is it your parents? Is it your wife? Or is it somebody totally unrelated? Uh, I can tell you my biggest fans are my kids, uh, for mm. sure. My daughter, uh, Sophia, is really in love with my music. She listens to it on her phone and her earbuds and she brags about it to her friends in, in distance learning. And I think it's cute. My biggest um, critic right now would be my wife for sure. Um, yeah. Just yesterday, she didn't like some lyrics I wrote she, there. She's like, they're too simple or you need to work on those lyrics. And I, and I, I really listen to what she tells me. Um, she is a big Spotify user. Um, mm -hmm. So she has curated playlists and she's she'll, she'll, she has discovered music that I have never even heard before. Um, so I would say that she's a huge influence in my life uh, musically um, right now. Of course, there's a lot of people that influence me, but right now she's, she's always there and just always listening. And um, sometimes she'll be outside the door listening. It won't come in because she knows I have my headphones on her. I'm really in the recording zone. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, I need that space sometimes. Um, but it would be my wife for sure, for sure. <laughs> oh man, I can go, I can talk about that for a long time. It's going to be my wife for sure though. I understand that and everything. How important do you think it is? Cause I've talked to folks, um, even Eris and her uh, relationship situation and everything. And I think that sometimes you need that space in terms of like your workspace and your space that you're able to do your thing and everything. So how important do you think it is to have that workspace that is your space that you're able to create and that she has that respect for and that your kids have that respect for as well. So how important do you think it is for people to create that space within their work environment? Well, okay, so I work a full-time job. She works a full-time job. My kids are all distance learning. We're all here at the house. I have a small house, um, not for long. We're going to be moving very soon this year. Um, you need to have that creative space. My wife complains it about a lot because her office is our bedroom right now. Um, and, um, she has her own iMac and she likes to do photography and she's always complaining. I need my own space. I feel kind of, uh, I feel kind of bad because I've built this space that you're in right, right now. This studio was built in 2010. Um, I took out some money out of my 401k to buy all this equipment, pay some contractors to come in and put these walls in and double, um, you know, you know, soundproof it. Um, so I don't have a garage. I would say I'm a spoiled brat. I've I've always had I always wanted a music studio ever since I was little. I think my mom's got a picture of me taking my dad's speakers and it's everything and pretending I had a studio in my bedroom at age 12. Um, yeah. You definitely need that space to where you can close a door and just listen to your thoughts and then uh, commit to it, whether it's uh, art design like she does um, or me writing music and just tinkering with the piano uh, and try to find the right chords and um, give yourself at least two hours to really get that concept going and then come back to it a little later. You got to take your lunch breaks. You got to take your 15 minute breaks, people, please. You can't just be in there grinding all the time. You're going to burn yourself out quickly. And I know, cause I'm doing that. So for me, you guys, um, I do mix and mastering. I have quite a few clients. I just finished up some work. I do it on my lunch breaks and then I go back to work. I do it after work and then I work on my music. Then I have to be a dad. Um, at one point I had a t-shirt company. Um, I run my own music label, Freaky Music Group. Um, so I have constant artists hitting me up. Hey, I got this new thing I want to put out. Um, and I do my own artwork too. My wife helps me now. And now I have Aries to help me with my write-ups. Thank the Lord I have her because uh, it's tough. I was doing it all by myself. And people are like, how are you doing this all by yourself in this little time? I'm like, a lot of wine drinking. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's tough, man. It is tough. Hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. It's very tough and everything. I did want folks, and I was going to pull it up from what I saw on YouTube to hear a little bit of your music and everything, so I'm going to see if we can't pull up a little bit of 11 uh, 
57? 11.57 p.m. And I might pull up another one as well. And then, of course, I do want folks, before we wind down, to hear about how they can reach you on social media. Who knows? There might be another discovery out there that is catching this from some part of the globe that needs to have your musical talent uh, enhance their musical talent and take it to the next level and everything. But definitely I want to see if I can pull up this cut and everything. So we're going to see if this is going to work or not because I never am sure which stream yard, whether it's going to work or not because that's just the nature of me. So like I said, we're going to see if this actually plays or not. Interesting cut. It plays. Yeah, that cool. one almost didn't make the album. Yep, that was what? It almost didn't make the album. That was uh, the last track I put on there. It's not the last track on the album, but uh, uh, I already had 12 songs, and I put a little snippet out on, I think it was Facebook or something, and I just got so many hits, like, bro, that song, let me get up on it or something. you know. It's, and I was like, then I started bumping it in my studio. I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to throw that on there. So I ended up bumping out another song um, and putting that one in. And it's funny because I was on something out of Sacramento called the Beat Gauntlet, um, and um, Aries had hooked it up. This is uh, Aries is my 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 public relations lady, uh, and of Hawaii. She's like, "Hey, just submit your album. It's good enough." What I didn't realize was that that Beat Gauntlet is they do instrumentals, and these guys are the baddest uh, uh, DJs producers in Sacramento, and they're doing like a like, trappy type of like like hip hop, you know, beats and like, and I'm over here with this this lo-fi album that I submitted with a pretty picture. Right. I ended up beating out one of the guys named Arsenic, who's I, I, hands down to this dude. He's really good uh, with that track. I wow. couldn't believe it. Yeah. My, um, my music was so different than theirs. It was chill. Um, a lot of the songs in there are really well worked. There's a lot of 
filtering effects going on at the very tail end of that year, like wobbling and um, like radio effects in the very beginning. And the sample you heard was something I saw on TV. And I grabbed my phone and do full recording and I recorded it from the TV. And then I was like, it was, that's why I didn't want it to be in the album because I didn't think it would sound good enough, but it fit the sound I was going for. Right. So you can hear it in there. So thanks for pulling that up. Uh, I haven't really heard that one in a while. Oh, yeah, definitely glad to pull that one up and everything. And actually, I was going to pull up just really quickly the title track as well and see if we can't bring that one because I also saw that I was able to pull up that. And as I go off, I'll probably play a little bit of Honey as well. But definitely, I just want to try to bring up Conceptualize. But before I bring up Conceptualize, if folks are watching and they're interested in knowing how to reach you and learning about um, definitely maybe reaching you either um, from other parts of the globe or even there in California or a number of other places that they may be catching us from. How would they reach you? What are some of the uh, socials that folks can catch you at? And how can they uh, reach you if they're interested in tag teaming or um, teaming up with you in one form or another? Uh, yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat too. Hopefully a little work here. Um, you can reach me uh, or listen to my music on my band camp. You can listen to me on Spotify. It's Andrew Lozano. I decided to use my full real name, no aliases. I'm, I'm not Dead Mouse. <laughs> I'm not Daft Punk. I'm just Andrew Lozano. Um, and um, if you look me up on Facebook and you see this face, I probably have like two different profiles. <clears throat> and um, if, um, uh, if you want to catch me on Instagram, it's Andrew.Lozano is my official artist page on there as well. Uh, but definitely Bandcamp, you can stream it right now and play it if you don't have a, um, uh, a subscription with Spotify or Apple Music. This is free. You can download it for free uh, or you can donate. I do have a, a, a $9.99 for the whole album or a dollar per album. But it's mainly Bandcamp. I love Bandcamp, but it's mainly like a donation uh, place and a place where people can learn about new musicians and new artists. So join, go to my Andrew, Dotlas, or Andrew Lozano at Bandcamp or Bandcamp.com. And you'll, you'll be able to hear some of my beats up there. Definitely. Um, what style, is there any kind of like specific kinds of musicians that you would love to get in touch with? You know, we talked about like the big stars that you would like to work with, but are sure. there like a certain kind of style of music or a style of uh, artist that you would personally like to work with? You definitely mentioned earlier about the conscious rap and a couple of other styles, but I'm just wondering if you could um, say that there are specific things that you resonate with more than others gosh you know i love so many different types of music um uh and there's a whole genre of synth wave music i like like taiko um, um and what's the other one B uh, bonobo um god m um um was it m um gosh i'm just losing my mind uh anybody on roche records they're a french label uh, mm -hmm. i love pomo uh, gosh yeah. uh, I don't know who I would reach out to first. I'm hoping that they will, my, my music will fall in the hands of their uh, phones <laughs> and their iPods. Uh, you know, um, gosh, I just don't know at this time. Um, I'm really trying to find myself musically in this, it, by switching genres, it's really, really fresh for me. Um, and I know all my house music fans and all my house music artists and friends who are in right now, um, all the labels I've been on are following me. So, um, and I've, I've, they've actually reached out to me and I've actually encouraged them to want to do more down tempo. Um, maybe uh, Mark Farina. He's okay. from San Francisco or from Chicago, moved to San Francisco, now lives in Texas or uh, Austin or Dallas, Texas. Mark Farina um, has something he created called Mushroom Jazz. It was on OM Records. Um, I had um, the opportunity to be on two of his Mushroom Jazz. Um, albums with my band unique and i was actually able to perform and he came to see me in sh uh actually in miami he came to our show i'm a really big fan of mark friend he's an excellent dj great producer just an all-around sweet guy um if you have a chance to watch mark Farina live watch him his mushroom jazz is good but his house music is amazing not an edm artist a real house real homie real fresh dude i would love to be on one of his uh, mushroom jazz albums again um i have submitted some music to him i'm not sure if he's heard it because he hadn't downloaded it yet i can see uh so mark if you're watching this please download my latest album brother um i'll hit you up uh just listen to it but i think you'll like it i wouldn't mind licensing something out on your uh, new mushroom jazz uh, albums 
Cool, but definitely hopefully he's watching and maybe he can catch it and definitely reach out to you and all of that. But um, I'm going to bring up the uh, title track, Conceptualize. Sure. Hopefully this one will work as well and we'll see how this goes on. But this is the title track, which is uh, Conceptualize. Yep. Yeah, that was nice and mellow. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's chill. Uh, you can, again, you hear the uh, kids playing in the park. That was my kids yeah. uh, using my. Oh, are your kids playing in the park? Cool. Uh, using an iPhone, they're playing on a playground with a bunch of other kids. And I just had to sit in there as I was watching them play. Just <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, guess really I did not realize how popular house music was until a few years back. But this was even way before COVID and everything. Maybe yeah. it was about five or six years ago. And I had run across a uh, young lady on the uh, internet who I think was supposed to be a uh, model. There was another lady that was part of one of those um, reality families and everything, like the Westbrooks and all of that. But then there was a lady from one of the Asian countries who was a DJ. And I know that she would have different people playing different roles. So basically, we created almost like a virtual nightclub. So everybody played their different roles in the, the nightclub. So I would use YouTube and other things to play music while different other folks would play various roles. Somebody might play the bartender. Somebody might play the, they're actually actual singers. So somebody might play the singer or a number of other things. But I was getting all kinds of requests for music that I had no clue about, including some of that house music and some of that other music that was popular over there in London and Malaysia and some of the other countries and everything. So that was, like I said, maybe about seven or eight years ago that that was going on. And I just remember learning a lot about these different art forms, including some of the house music that was coming out of London and coming out of Asia and even some that was coming out of, I think, some of the Northern African countries as well. So definitely it seems like it's been growing in popularity for decades and all. But I was just wondering, are there any kind of like um, musicians from that are in the house field from other parts of the globe that you were big time fans of? I know a lot of those that you mentioned we're here in kind of the Western field, but I didn't know if there were any Asian or uh, some of the other parts of the world house musicians that you had become fans of during the course of your studying of the music. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's some musicians out of um, like on Roche records. 
Uh, of course, I've always liked the French um, disco scenes like like Daft Punk, uh, Justice. Um, but uh, there is some really amazing artists that you should check out on Roche Music. Um, there's a guy named Darius, um, D-A-R-I-U-S, not Darius Rucker, or Rooker, whatever his name is. Uh, there's a guy named Cartel, um, who's amazing. Um, it's K-A-R-T-E-L-L. Um, there's another guy, he doesn't really do house music, but he does a live performance. He's really good. It's called FKJ, French Kiwi Juice. Mm. Yeah, you would, I know for, you, for sure you would love this dude. He's got a white guy, play dreads, uh, sings, plays saxophone, bass, and programs stuff on the fly. Uh, wow. Kind of like Reggie Watts, but but just really that really soothe, smooth electronic jazz. Uh, amazing stuff. Um, gosh, man, overseas, it's really tough because there's so many. Um, uh, gosh. Uh, oh, Jamiroquai. What? Jamiroquai. Uh, if you don't know who Jamiroquai is, look them up. It's a hard name to spell, say and, and it's spell. Look up Jamiroquai. I think that they're one of the best funk house groups there is. And I don't mean house like disco. They're, they're like disco. A kind of in a sense, but it's like future jazz funk. Um, and I that was one of my favorite bands too, is Jamiroquai. I definitely love that band. Um, but yeah, just anybody on Roche Records, man. Uh, it's yeah. spelled really funny. Yeah, I know that there's a lot of folks that are definitely uh, becoming very fine-tuned into some of the music coming from a lot of the other parts of the globe as well. I know that there's a restaurant nearby here, and the young lady is actually from Mexico, if I remember correctly, but she's a big fan of K-pop, and she's a big fan of that whole Korean yeah. pop scene, and there's a yeah, number yeah. of other those kind of scenes that are Ooh. coming out and becoming very popular that are representing different parts of our globe. So I'm just glad to see that we're starting to get uh, more representation here in the United States of other parts of the music from around the globe because there's been some tremendous music coming from around the globe for you know centuries but uh we haven't necessarily had as much exposure to it so I'm glad to see k-pop and I remember even some of the uh early hip-hop days when there was like some French uh hip-hop artists that were coming out in some of the early hip-hop days and some of the things of that nature so I'm just glad to see that we're starting to see more of the uh music becoming truly global in the sense of recognizing great music from other parts of the globe. And I was wondering your thoughts on that. Well, um, you know, if you're going to go there, you know, Daft Punk, right? How they just broke up recently, right? Um, Daft Punk really was inspired by the cats on the East Coast. Uh, you got like Paul Johnson, Paul Johnson, um, great producer. I, we opened up for Paul Johnson at Smart Bar. He, um, you got DJ Sneak, DJ Rush, um, Hyperactive. Um, you got Kenny Dope, uh, DJ Hell. I mean, uh, of course, you got your Mark Farina, Todd Terry. Uh, all of these guys are the pioneers. They are the teachers of house music. Um, uh, Brian Wilson. Um, they're just, you know, Jeff Mills. I mean, just to name a few, Roy Davis. They're, those guys, I would say, if, you're, if you don't know what house music is, do your research. Learn who started this stuff in, in Detroit and Chicago, you know, um, and they inspired groups like Daft Punk. If you listen right. to the earlier stuff, it was, they got inspired by Paul Johnson, DJ Sneak. Um, I think DJ Sneak actually wrote some lyrics on, on Daft Punk's first album, uh, or maybe it was the second album. I can't remember, but yeah, these are the, these are the real McCoys. If you, and I'm not talking about EDM. Okay. Um, or, you know, there's a lot of good EDM artists out there, just to name a few. They're just, they're out there. Um, but these are the Chicago, Detroit house music people. And there's a lot of people in Germany who wrote really good techno. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, if, here, in the, here in the States, if you uh, you want to listen to techno music, you got Moby back in yeah. the early day. Moby was starting. He was like big. You got Dead Mouse. You know, um, of course, you got your Tiestos. You have your Cascade. You know, there's a lot of good EDM artists out there. But those people I named before, like Paul Johnson, DJ uh, sneak those are the teachers right there from way back in the day uh and i tell you those there were big influences on me and i got a chance to meet a couple of those people yeah definitely it's always great when you're able to meet those folks and everything that inspire you as i'm here to wind down and everything i just wanted to know if folks are um uh, 
one of the things that we love doing with folks, and by the way, Eris was making another comment about uh, her thoughts about Daft Punk and all of that. Yes. So definitely was giving you some kudos for uh, yes. our conversation and all of that. But one of the things that I love doing as we wind down is talk about uh, things that are, are inspirational and all of that. So I try to get all my guests to give a positive message or a positive thought that they would like to share with the world, uh, not just here in the United States, but throughout the globe. So any kind of positive word or positive encouragement, positive affirmation that you would like to give our global audience, this is your chance to do that right now because I've thoroughly enjoyed talking with you and you're always welcome to come back as well. And I will close out with a uh, the Honey song as well. But definitely I wanted to know if there were any positive messages that you would love to share with our global audience. Yeah, I just want to just spread love across the world and the universe because we need more of it. We need less hate and more love for each other. Um, we need to, uh, we need to call each other in these times. If you haven't talked to your friend because of COVID pick up the phone, they're probably waiting to hear from you. Um, we need to unite somehow um, in the, in these hard times. We need to care for each other. Um, send somebody a care package who's not doing too or maybe they lost their job. I, I know my wife and I've done that too. We, you know, um, just spread love, spread your, spread your, your talents um, and just be real. Um, but definitely reach out to someone, pick up the phone, give them a call, tell them you love them. And, and that's what really matters. And I really appreciate you having me on the show, man. It really means a lot. And I'm looking forward to maybe having another interview once my new album comes out. Yeah, I'll definitely be getting you back on a, uh, Another one once the new album comes out. And definitely, like I said before, anytime that uh, you've got thoughts that you want to share about the music scene or just about life in general, I try to make this a home for everybody to come back and to come back as many times as they would like. So know that this is definitely one of your uh, media homes. So anytime that you want to come back and share whatever wisdom you want to, you're always welcome. You had also mentioned that your uh, wife is an artist and we love talking to both artists and photographers as well. That's actually one of the things nice. that my dad does as well. So maybe we'll have her on or maybe we'll have the two of you on oh, sharing your creativity and everything, but definitely it's an opportunity for both of you to be back on the uh, show and everything. Cause like I said, I love exposing the world to talented folks from around the world. So definitely, I'm definitely, I think folks have learned a lot about you, but also I would love to at some point be able to share her artwork as well. Absolutely. Look at my album cover. <laughs> She's amazing. Follow her, Angela Lozano on Instagram. Um, just share heart, whatever it costs, whatever it takes, um, and express how you how she makes you feel because uh, she makes me feel great every day when she makes that takes those pictures. Great. Definitely glad to have you on. And like I said, I'm going to put on Honey and that'll close the show out. And then, like I said, I will be uh, putting this on one of our upcoming shows as we did this earlier interview and everything. But I appreciate you being on and I look forward to having more great conversations with you in the very near future. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Right. Yep. <laughs> cool.
Nope, I think you're on mute. Want to thank Eric for providing another amazing guest and another great conversation and all of that. So definitely uh, want to thank you, Andrew, for joining us here on thank the you. radio show. And if there's any parting shots that you want to give folks before we get ready to bring on that uh, theme music that started off the show and also ends the show as well. So I didn't know if you had any parting last thoughts that you wanted to share or things that you feel that we might not have covered during our hour and 47 minute long conversation and everything. Oh, just shout out to my kids, man. I love you. Angelica, uh, Sophia, and my Stella Rose and my wife, Angela. That's it. Sounds great. <laughs> Looking forward to meeting them as well at some point or another. But right now, we'll bring on the theme music, and that'll wrap up with this interview. But it was definitely an enlightening conversation, and I learned a lot about the music game from your perspective and everything. So definitely wanted to thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you. We'll be catching up a little later then. Yep. <laughs> That was the uh, pre-interview part two that I did with Andrew Lozano. And like I said, that was a great conversation. and definitely enjoyed having the opportunity to interview that gentleman and learn about his thoughts on music and a number of other things as well. So always great when Eris gives me some truly amazing guests to interview and to share their wisdom and, and the things that they are involved with. And of course, Eris runs something called Ubo Magazine. So definitely want to thank Eris over there in Hawaii for helping me to find some truly amazing guests that I was definitely enjoying and enjoying having the opportunity to see what they were all about. So definitely that was truly amazing and got a chance to hear their story and what they were all about and what they were doing in their life. So definitely glad that that took place and we're going to see if anybody else is going to appear for interviews on this particular Mullins Music and Memories. And of course, I know we've got some guests in the disability community that will be joining us on Wednesday for the online dinner party. And I've still got to figure out which women will be the mystery guests for this particular month because I do love having mystery guests and all of that. So we got to figure out which ones are going to join us as our mystery guests and uh, do some research as I got to find the trivia for them as well because love having those mystery guests and love trying to have y'all guess who they are and what they're all about. So that's some of the things that will be going on on Wednesday. And don't forget that the uh, we will have the Gamers uh, Den. That will be coming your way at noon. That's right. They moved it up an hour at noon on uh, Thursday. So noon until noon will be the uh, Gamers Den. And looking forward to a great conversation with many gamers and seeing all the things that they've got going on as well. So definitely looking forward to that in the uh, not-too-distant future and all of that. But right now, I want to bring up some information about an organization that is giving money to some nonprofits as well as letting uh, you hear about some of these nonprofits. Hello, and welcome to the North Star Initiative. I'm Glendola Massenberg Beasley, and in this time of COVID, the North Star Initiative serves as an accelerator to promote, support, and secure funding for small, rural, and urban businesses. Our team is here to assist you with overcoming cash flow obstacles. Let's listen to Dr. Dennis Rogers as he interviews three local business owners as they share their experiences during these uncertain times. My name is Dr. Dennis Rogers, and I'm being joined today by Dr. Tanya Armstrong. Welcome, Dr. Armstrong. Tell us a little bit about your business, Dr. Armstrong. Absolutely. I am the owner of the Armstrong Center for Hope. It is an interdisciplinary practice of psychology where we specialize in psychological and spiritual wellness for all ages. We have a main office in Durham that has been functional for 10 years this month, actually. And we also opened a second office in Raleigh in uh, the fall of 2019. And so we've been providing individual, family, couple, and group psychotherapies, as well as psychological testing, consultations, and trainings to the public. Excellent. Who are your clients, Maxwell? Who do you 
do business with and how does that interaction take place? The, uh, the majority of my business now, because it, it has changed, uh, is farmers, commercial landscapers, um, landowners, uh, people that are looking to maintain their equipment, to mm -hmm. maintain their land. Yes. Um, and then we still have a good number of residential customers with the lawnmowers and, and things like that to take care of their property, but mainly we're doing larger uh, equipment now. The biggest thing to help someone in any trade or any craft is to treat the one person the same as you would the next one coming through the door. Mm -hmm. Because if they, they figure out that you're fair and that you're going to charge them fairly, you're going to charge Joe over here the same as John, mm -hmm. they'll come to you. Right. But if they think you go, you give him a break and he's going to go out there and tell everybody else, hey, he cut me a break, that kind of thing, then you, all of a sudden you've just opened up a can of worms mm -hmm. and you got to cut everybody a We are a live entertainment uh, company and that's something uh, that we pride ourselves on and, and the experience, that face-to-face -face experience right. where you can actually feel the electricity and the spirit of the music um, bouncing off of the people in the audience, that's what's really important to us. So while we are looking at uh, ways to incorporate streaming, what we really want to do is be patient and wait for um, the opportunity for us to gather um, because healing is, uh, music is healing mm -hmm. and it's unifying and so I think it'll be important for us when uh, it's safer to, to gather and to really heal as a community and as a nation with some live music. And one thing that we love to do is contract and subcontract, like I said, with small businesses who have just as much uh, on the line as we do as a yes. small business. So uh, looking back at the festival and at our concerts, we make sure that we contract with uh, transportation companies, with catering businesses, with marketing agencies that are small businesses and that are minority owned businesses so that everyone is getting a piece of this pie. Mm -hmm. Everyone is going for their own success. And in the end, because we all have a shared uh, out outcome, um, everyone's working hard to make it come, come to fruition. Excellent. Great job, Dr. Rogers. So business owners, if you're seeking a grant or business funding, our North Star Initiative offers a no-cost assessment for funding opportunities. Contact us via our website at www.gmbeasley.com. Your business could be featured with our next North Star promotion. Natural Breeden, and I'm introducing a new author in her publication. Dr. Veronica Hardy is an inspirational speaker, author, and educator. Through her writing and public speaking, she uses the power of story to reveal and confront challenges experienced by the readers and listeners. And this is showcased through her book, A Letter to My Sisters, Reflecting on God's Promises. Hardy, what influenced the title of your book? I can say, now I did change the title a few times. Um, it went from, I think I started with calling it Tamar's View, um, to capture more from her perspective. Mm -hmm. Then I switched it to Everybody Has Their Stuff. You know, we all oh, carry yes. something. Yes. And then finally I decided to pray. You know, God, what, what do you really want people to receive or know from this book? Mm -hmm. And so that's when a letter to my sisters reflecting on God's promises really came to me because I felt it was really fitting that I was writing something for other women to read from my heart to theirs. Oh, thank you. Now, Dr. Hardy, why did you choose the story about Tamar as the basis of the book? I feel like oftentimes we don't talk much about the women, women in the Bible who have gone through difficulties mm -hmm. such as her. She was raped or sexually assaulted by her half-brother. Okay. And I just thought that was an important story to be able to bring out. And I thought it was important to kind of bring out her story, how she responded to it, so we could also look at how we respond to it as well. 
Absolutely. Now, Dr. Hardy, how does the story of Tamar serve as an example for you? Mm, I would say strength, for one. It seems like it seems like she didn't hide it at mm -hmm. all. And I think sometimes if someone were to ask us, we want to cover it. We don't want to yes. share it. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we're carrying the shame or we feel like we're guilty that we mm -hmm. caused the situation to happen to us. Mm -hmm. So I was glad she was able to share it with her brother, acknowledge it. And then he said to her, don't take it to heart. Mm -hmm. And that message spoke to me that we don't have to carry it carry what someone else did to us, we don't have to make that become part of our identity, but for us to remember who we are, because she was a princess, okay? and that's not taken away because of what someone else did to her, and I just wanted us as women to remember who we are in God's eyes. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely uh, great uh, words of wisdom from uh, Veronica Hardy. And of course, folks definitely want to be checking out some of the things that she's got going on and all of the amazing things that she's got happening with her as well. So definitely that's something that I'm encouraging folks to check out some of the things that she's doing and some of the amazing things that she is doing as well. So definitely uh, always good to have amazing folks share their wisdom and share a lot of the things that they are involved with and ways that we can possibly even help them in what they're doing also. So that was just one of the things that I was going to pull up and let y'all check out as we're in the middle of the show, Mullins and Music and Memory. So always glad to have some great conversations, some amazing knowledge and things along that line. So definitely uh, was sharing a little bit of that with y'all. And I'm also going to try to bring up possibly some music for y'all to share as well, but all kinds of amazing things that are going on. So I just wanted y'all to check that out. And I've got another spot that I might bring up about an event that goes on, I believe in the Atlanta area. So I'll probably bring that up very shortly as well. And I think y'all will enjoy seeing what that is all about and possibly learning from that as well. Because we do love bringing you powerful knowledge and giving you some uh, things that you can take with you as you move forward in the course of the day and the course of the week. Because it's always important for us to try to find ways to develop positive attitudes and positive outlooks on the various things that are happening in our life as we try to go about and do all kinds of amazing things in our life in whatever ways we can do those. Because I am one of those people that believes in us trying to be balanced in any way that we can be balanced, meaning trying to keep balanced on the physical side, meaning trying to do exercise and things of that nature, even though lately I've been not the best person in the sense of doing that on a regular and routine basis. So I've got to do much better on that myself as well, but definitely uh, it's something that I'm trying to get better at and trying to do more of. So I know that I need to work on that. I know other folks need to probably work on it as well. And then, of course, trying to get better in the sense of also doing some things that will uh, do better in the, the sense of uh, emotional health, uh, mental health, and, of course, trying to um, th have things to add to the spiritual health as well. That is always something important to do in our lives. And we'll see if this is going to work. I'm going to try to bring up some music from Preston Shannon. And this is the first time I've tried it. You in using this new feature they've got about video files. So we're going to see if it actually works. So this is going to be an experiment on both of our parts. So let's see if this actually works. Okay, it looks like that one did not have a video track with it. So if it doesn't have a video track, it's definitely not going to work. And we do know that just from everything else. So I was thinking that it had a video track on that particular song also, but it did not. So we're going to see about some other ones that I might try to bring around and see if they've got video tracks in any of these other songs that I was thinking about trying to play. You know, they were all strictly audio and it looks like if they're strictly audio. They will not be working in that sense or in any other sense as well. But we're going to see if they've got any here that are also in the form of video files. So like I said, we're going to see if we can find some that are video files as well. So we're going to check those out 
and see if we can find one of those that's in the form of a video file. So let's see if any of these things are going to work in that sense. So maybe we'll give y'all a taste of some music from John B. Key. And let's see if this works or not, since John B. Key is somebody from this area. So let's see if this works or not. But we're going to try it and see if this one works.
All right, so we're going to see if we can bring up another track as well of some more entertainment stuff going on. Always glad to bring y'all some amazing things that exist and to see what else we've got going on as well. So, like I said, I'm going to see if I've got anything else. But in the meantime, let's bring up about Mr. Moody and an event he's got going on in Atlanta. Producers, directors, I met designers. And then everybody says, oh, this is my, my sixth year. I mean, and oh, this is my fourth year. I mean, Shout out to New York. We're in New York in like seven hours. Oh, my gosh, yes. We have a 658 flight. So. We got to go home. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Let me tell you something. Every single person that's come through the store has spoke so highly of you. And what a great event this is. Yes. I'm representing <laughs> DJ Darrow, who is a platinum producer. He uh, did the uh, hit track for Tupac Shakur, Keep Your Head Up, Snoop Dogg, Keisha Cole. Nick. Yep, Zach, you said that's an amazing event that goes on in the East Coast and definitely looking forward to having Jermaine Moody up here on our show in the uh, not too distant future and everything. So I'm reaching out to him and hoping that he'll be appearing in a very short time to share with us a lot of the different things that he's got going on as well. So definitely definitely looking forward to that, looking forward to, to that conversation <clears throat> and looking forward to a lot of other things in that regards as well. So definitely keep that in mind that we're always looking for amazing guests. So if you've got a story that you'd like to share, don't hesitate to uh, contact us at bluesradio at gmail.com. That's bluesradio at gmail.com. Like I said, we would definitely love to have you join us and share a little bit about what you've got going on as well, because we always love having a lot of folks share their wisdom, their knowledge, and the different things that they've got going on in their life and all of that. So definitely keep that in mind and uh, definitely would look forward to uh, seeing more of uh, great guests and definitely learning more about the amazing things that y'all have going on in your world. So definitely if you're interested in being a guest, on Mullins Music and Memories, don't hesitate to get in touch with us at the email bluesradio at gmail.com. So always looking for truly amazing guests and all of that. So definitely looking forward to seeing more and more truly amazing guests and seeing when y'all can uh, come on and share your wisdom and all of that. So we're definitely looking forward to, to uh, having you as a guest if you've got a story to tell. And of course, you know, in my realm, I love hearing from my entrepreneurs and my creatives and my educators and my activists. So that's just some of the people that I enjoy talking to, but I also enjoy talking to sports figures and a number of other people as well. So in matter of fact, I need to get back in touch with Travis and see if Travis Diener is going to take that job over there at Marquette. Because like I said, we interviewed him. He's a former Marquette player. I don't know that he has any interest in that job, but who knows? Maybe he'll decide to take that job, and then we can say that we had a Marquette coach on one of our shows since we had the pleasure of interviewing him not that long ago. But right now, let's check out some public service announcements. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm going to drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely going to call a ride home. What's the coolest thing about your job? Engineers take the very best of science and technology. They solve problems. Did you know all that stuff when you were my age? All I knew is that I really liked math and I really liked science. Yep, and definitely need to be encouraging people into those fields and definitely doing a great job of that as well. So always good hearing folks giving encouragement. What's and the coolest thing about your job? Engineers take the very best of science and technology. They solve problems. Did you know all that stuff when you were my age? All I knew is that I really liked math and I really liked science. 
When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. Wow. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. I am um, from Washington, D.C., but I was, I was raised in Durham, North Carolina. I came to Durham uh, when I was about five or six. And then um, I traveled back and forth to DC because it's where my people are from. One of the unique things about my family is my mother, she's also an artist, she does quilting. And um, she does a lot of artistic things. And then um, my son, he draws with both hands, his right hand and his left hand like I do. So that's kind of a family trait. And then my other son, he's a videographer, and my daughter, she works, um, she's a regional vice president for Sunglass Lab. When you start out drawing and sketching, you want to continue to explore, you know, each avenue. I do pastels, I do pen and ink, I do painting, I do, I do acrylics, I haven't done oils yet. But I try to do all facets of art. What I say to a lot of times to people is, you know, you can't put yourself in a box when you're an artist. You have to, you have to explore. And over the course of my life, I've tried to explore different mediums. I also do sculpture um, as well. I choose my subjects by the intensity that, that they have in their faces or, or the intensity that somebody is moving because I do more than portrait portrait drawings. I also do um, some, I do abstract and then I do figurative drawing also. Well, what happened in this particular show is that I started out trying to come up with something that would be a little bit different than what everybody else is doing. So I was working on a Barack Obama show mm -hmm. and they wanted me to do some uh, paintings of Barack and so what I did was because of the deadlines I kind of did it kind of fast. And then I realized when I was doing it fast, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And so then I started doing other pieces the same way and I started to enjoy those pieces also. And so I came up with this particular style and um, it's a style of lines and colors. And what's interesting is that when I was in college, I did a show called Lines, Colors, and I talked about the, the, the boldness of the blacks, the, the hotness of the whites, and this is how this, how this has come about, you know, later on in my life. And the colors come from um, a lot of the entertainers that I work with, where they wear different colors. They don't wear, you know, your plain reds or your whites, they wear different colors. And so that's, that's also another piece of, of what's giving me the colors. Mm -hmm. The subtitle of this show is Faces That Speak Life. That's real critical. Faces That Speak Life. Each one of these pieces is a life source and a life energy that, that's being put on display for people that are looking at them. You know, I always say in terms of my art, it's not important that I draw them. It's important what you get out of what I draw. You know, I don't try to I don't try to just draw it because you like it. People wanted me to do prints. I didn't do prints. You know, people want, asked me to do different people, but the people that I choose are people that make a difference in the lives of people in the world. So the human landscape idea was, again, as I say, the lines represent your emotions. It represents your ideas and it represents your journey as a human being. And that's why you get the different pieces and the different looks. And as you notice, I try not to do one look that looks alike another look. And that's what's the most important part of this show. Definitely some interesting conversation right there and everything. So always great to have some amazing folks share their wisdom and their knowledge. So definitely was having that going on in that case. And right now we're going to see about some other things going on as well. So right now we're going to check out a little bit about this, which was done recently as well. So definitely hope folks will enjoy this also.
Well, we're going to come back and see if we can get that back up and running and see what was happening in that sense. Sometimes these things happen and all of that. So we're going to see if we can't go back and uh, find out what was going on with that and see if we can't get it back up and running because I believe that was a poetry piece and a performance piece that I was trying to bring to y'all as well. So going to see if we can uh, try that piece one more time and see what happens in this regards and all of that. So we're going to try one more time and see if we have a better luck on the second go round as well. But, you know, this is just the way things go. Sometimes you have good luck. Sometimes you don't. So we're going to see whether we have a better luck with this particular number in a matter of a minute or so and see if it works around the second time. But uh, definitely always good is having folks uh, share their thoughts and the things that they've got going on as well. So definitely uh, this was actually some stuff that was sent on to us around the Christmas time. And I know that folks just love seeing lights and all of that. So we're going to let. as you wanted at Woolworths, but you couldn't sit down at the lunch counter. In restaurants, there were no, no places where one of color could sit, so it was degrading. It's, it's, it's humiliating, and, and one should never have to experience that in life. I was about to do what you call boil over or steam over. I, I had so much anxiety and I had so much hate for an unequal uh, system that there was absolutely no way that I could live feeling the way that I felt. Joseph McNeil, Ezell Blair, Franklin McCain, and David Richmond, four college freshmen, walk in and take seats at a diamond store lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina.